Hey everyone, my name is Wedge and Dominaria preview season is just insane, it's insane! In this video I have so many ridiculous cards to talk about it's basically unreal. I'm not going to bore you with a long intro, we have too much to cover so strap in, hit that like button if you like the video, and get ready for the Dominarian ride of your life, let's go! Holy butts, Karn Scion of Urza is 4 mana for a 5 loyalty legendary planeswalker. You can plus 1 and reveal the top 2 cards of your library, an opponent chooses one of them, put that card into your hand and exile the other with a silver counter on it. You can minus 1 and put a card you own with a silver counter on it from exile into your hand. You can also minus 2 and create a 0, zero construct artifact creature token with. This creature gets plus 1 plus 1 for each artifact you control. This is an incredibly interesting card. The first ability is giving you card advantage. Now, your opponent does get to choose the card you get, but it's still card advantage nonetheless. Then you can minus one and get the other card if you want. Either way, Karn draws you cards. He'll probably draw you lands a lot of the time, but again, he's getting cards for a heavily discounted price. And with his starting loyalty so high, and his ability cost so low, as long as he isn't killed, he'll be getting you cards for a long time. Even his ultimate is only minus two, he can create a pair of artifacts, energy creatures, and still have enough loyalty left to start ticking up again. This Karn is meant to play the long game like Karn himself. It'll be interesting to see where he fits in, but I love him in some type of blue-black artifact matter shell. The deck is there. I like it a lot. Also, I mean, you could just put him in Brea or Sharum or Sidri and you'll do just fine. I love this big old golem. Lyra Dawn Bringers, three of anything and two white for a 5-5 legendary creature angel with flying, first strike, and lifelink. Other angels you control get plus one plus one and have lifelink. It finally happened! A commander solely dedicated to angels. Kalia, you best take a backseat, girl. Lyra's here, and she is huge. Well worth the mythic tag, as she will be exclusively played in Commander. And obviously, limited, because she's just absurd. We're in Baneslayer Angel territory with Tribal Upside, so actually maybe standard. And I can't mention this enough. Look at that artwork. Someone pinch me. Chris Rand, how do you even do this? Foil copies. Now, please, thank you. Commander Deck Tech incoming. G2 Chronicler is 2 mana for a 1-3 human wizard with a kicker cost of 4 mana. Yes, kicker! When the Chronicler enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. I love Kicker. I've loved it the first time it was around, I still love it now. This is a common, but I had to talk about it because Kicker is great. It's a phenomenal ability, gives a lot of versatility to every card it's on. It's just wonderful. I love it to death. Slim Vote of the Rising Deep is 6 of anything and 2 blue for an 8-8 legendary creature Leviathan with a kicker cost of 2. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, return all creatures to their owner's hands except for Murful, Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, and Serpents? I, I think it finally happened. I think we finally have a legitimate Sea Titan commander, right? I mean, what else is there? Thassa maybe? Lorthos the Tidemaker? Nope, this is it. Slim Voda is the legit Sea Titan commander. I did not expect a creature like this at all, but now that I see it, I'm pretty excited. Talk about the stock of Whelming Wave going up. How funny would this deck be? Full of Leviathans, Octopuses, Serpents, Krakens. I love it. I really do. Too many decks to build from this set. I'm telling you, it's so great. Oh no, 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 Goblin Warchief is reprinted in a normal set. Do you know what that means? It means this menace is now in Modern. Modern Goblins just got so annoying. Goblin Warchief is a straight up nightmare. If you hate playing against Goblins, you better dodge Modern for a bit because, dang, Goblin Warchief can smash just, oh crap. Kamal's Druidic Vow is X and 2 green for a legendary sorcery. Look at the top X cards of your library. You may put any number of land and or legendary permanent cards with converted mana costs X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest into your graveyard. Are we just making Captain Sisse stupidly expensive now? The Druidic Vow is obviously very strong in a deck full of legendaries, which includes planeswalkers, creatures, and anything else unique and awesome. Add in the value for land ramp and you have a sick commander spell designed for Sisse. It's a bit narrow to use, so we gotta focus our energy, Sisse. Song of Freilis is two mana for an enchantment saga. On one and two, until your next turn, creatures you control gain the ability to tap to add one mana of any color. On three, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Those creatures gain vigilance, trample, and indestructible until end of turn. Is it just me, or is this token deck becoming real insane? The entire set isn't even out yet, and I'm telling you, the signs are there. Song of Freilis is like Cryptolithrite that then turns into a stupidly powerful anthem effect. Think about how wide you can go with this card and just overrun your opponents. This may not seem like a big deal, but I think it absolutely is. Those token decks, I'm gonna start building mine right now, that's just so gross. 
The doll is the cinder wind is one of anything one blue and one red for a 2-2 legendary creature human wizard with flying and haste. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, wizards you control get plus one plus one until end of turn. Wowza! I expected this to give itself plus one plus one, but definitely not all wizards. This is looking real fly in the wizard tribal deck that will obviously exist, as well as in the wizard tribal deck currently being ridiculous as heck in commander right now. Rare worthy tribal power in an uncommon slot turns on legendary sorceries and wizard synergy cards. Solid include for sure, plus I really want one of these in foil. Man, the art in this set is bonkers. Oh my goodness, Daragaz reincarnated as four of anything, one black, one red, and one green for a 7-7 seven, seven legendary creature dragon with flying trample and haste. If Daragaz reincarnated would die, instead exile it with three A counters on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, if Daragaz is exiled with an A counter on it, remove an A counter from it. Then if Daragaz has no A counters on it, return it to the battlefield. I love this set. Dargaz was one of my favorite dragons from Invasion. This dude is crazy huge, and now he's back with a vengeance, suspending himself upon death for three turns. Dargaz, I love you so much. This is a beef steak if there ever were one. Seven mana for a 7-7 seven, seven flying trample haste dragon that comes back whenever it dies. Just sign me the heck up. Muldrotha the Gravetide is three of anything, one black, one green, and one blue for a 6-6 legendary creature elemental avatar. During each of your turns, you may play up to one permanent card of each permanent type from your graveyard. All right, that ability, pretty dang gross. You get to replay lands, planeswalkers, enchantments, anything you want, at least one of each type per turn. Do you realize how disgusting that is? None of your cards ever really go away. And we're talking about black and blue here, removal and disruption. Maldrotha effectively gives you infinite copies of your spells as long as she survives. Who doesn't want a million strip mine or wasteland or lotus petal? Who doesn't want to fill their graveyard with everything they could ever need with dredge cards? Maldrotha is crazy pants, absolute crazy pants. Might be my favorite soul tie card since Tassiger, which is my favorite soul tie card since ever. We're also getting a phenomenal set of uncommon spell lands. We're going to go one by one here and you'll see why. They all enter the battlefield tapped and tap for their respective color of mana. Memorial to Glory. You can pay four, tap it, and sacrifice it to create two 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens. This memorial is to Gerard, a hero of Dominaria who helps stop Yogmith. This memorial is built in Benalia, his home. Next is the Memorial to Genius. You can pay five, tap it, and sacrifice it to draw two cards. This piece of art depicts a Talarian campus. The original Talarian Academy was straight up decimated, so this is a fitting and beautiful memorial, with Urza overlooking built into the mountain. Dang, this is pretty. Next is the Memorial to Folly. You can pay three, tap it, and sacrifice it to return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. This piece of art is the Martyr's Tomb, long after its construction, when it's been assaulted and ignored by the Cabal long enough to simply fall apart. It's a somber piece of art right there. Beautiful in a way, but somber. Next is the Memorial to War. You can pay five, tap it, and sacrifice it to destroy target land. The statue you see in this piece is Corona False God. She's basically Dominaria, kind of like a Shia, but way more ridiculous. There was a huge war caused by Corona. It basically destroyed an entire continent, and building a statue to remind everyone of that horrible war, not a bad idea. This area forever lost to bloodshed and ruin. And last, but certainly not least, the Memorial to Unity. You can pay three, tap it, and sacrifice it to look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand, then put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Talking about bringing back memories, this is Eladamri, an elf lord. Instrumental in saving the elven people of Dominaria from Yogmith, Eladamri should be eternally remembered and praised. Another true hero of the plane. I love that he's built out of wood instead of stone, paying true homage to a great being. This set though, God, I'm so happy it exists. I mean, I don't know what else to say. I adore everything about Dominaria. Again, I know I get excited easier than most. I really do. But the set's chock full of so much flavor and beauty and nostalgia. I can't help but fall into the pit of hype. I can't. I love the set. I pray to the heavens that it's great for limited. It's already shown us so much for Commander, some stuff for modern and standard. So I gotta know what you think. Are you in? Are you out? What's still holding you back? What allowed you to jump into the hype pit with me? I gotta know your thoughts, so please leave them below and we'll talk about all of it. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.
This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. I feel like a broken record, but I mean, y'all, Dominaria would be crazy. The set's still being spoiled, and we've seen so much. If you're as excited as I am and you don't have a local game store, or yours charges way too much, you can get boxes pre-ordered right now and shipped to your door the second the set releases for $91 each. It's a great deal. No reason not to take advantage if you want this set. Just pre-order now. Also, you know, it helps the channel, which is great, so enjoy.